welcome once again to this course in optimization. Today uh, we are going back to our study of quasi Newton method which are by the way very effective methods. Now um, this is the problem that we really intended to solve because we had a matrix B k and we now want to improve from B k to B k plus 1 such that that B k is B k plus 1 would be symmetric satisfy the second equation as well as it has to be a positive definite at the end. So, how do I do it? Okay. Now, how do you choose the norm of a matrix? Now, because I am taking symmetric matrices, in the case of uh, symmetric matrices, there is an important norm. So, if you have a matrix A, there is an important class of norm called the Frobenius norm. And this Frobenius norm can be actually written as the trace of A A and you take half of that right. Now, of course, this simply means that you can just uh, write it down right. Now, because you have n cross n matrix you can write down this as summation if all the elements of these are a i j. So, you can write them as a i j square where i and j are varying from 1 to n. Now, usually in practice people have used what is called the weighted Frobenius norm of a matrix. So, it is called the weighted Frobenius norm. Now, the weighted Frobenius norm of the matrix is defined as the matrix A multiplied by a weight. Now, I would like to remind you why we use this symbol w to the power half. So, what is that square root of a matrix precisely. So, these matrices are PSD matrices right. Usually, these are positive semi definite matrices. So, what it means that if you give me a positive semi definite matrix, there is a famous result if A is positive semi definite, then there exists a positive semi definite matrix PSD matrix symmetric A is a n cross n symmetric PD positive semi definite matrix, then there will exist a symmetric positive definite matrix B such that A is equal to p square or b is usually marked as or not denoted as a to the power half. So, with this that is that is the meaning of this w. Now, usually w is so chosen that you know if you take a matrix like this basically then if you look at this matrix B minus B bar or B minus B k. So, you really have to choose you want the weighted thing. So, it should be w to the more minus half. So, this is not the only way to do it uh, it is ok, but this is one of the ways used in practice. So, we are just showing one of you 
this approach, but it might be quite difficult for a beginner. So, we will not just go into too much details give you an idea about what would go on. And then take a simpler version of the problem and give a solution which Guler has given which is a simple and beautiful solution and once you see that you can really appreciate and understand what, what has happened. So, if you take a W like this we expect W to satisfy W y k should be is equal to s k which is nothing but the reverse of it is nothing but the reverse of the as if W y k is s k then of course, B s k P k s k is y k this can be y k and so on and so forth. So, sorry, B k. So, this is what you would expect, we, we expect this to happen, and how do you know what is your W? So, usually W is given as the inverse of the matrix. G k inverse which is called the average Hessian. And this has a particular uh, formula which says you are basically integrating out the Hessian matrix. So, you have taken the matrix and integrating it out term by term every term of the matrix is integrated and the new matrix means this is now a matrix G is a matrix whose every term is some sort of an integral of this you take the easier matrix term by term you integrate. Right this is x k minus x k plus 1 into d to. Now, if you choose something like this and try to optimize this problem get a solution to this problem, then your solution becomes. So, if I call this problem as q n or the quasi Newton problem. So, the solution of q n is i minus y k s k transpose divided by y k s k. looks elegant that such a complicated looking thing would give such a nice result. So, these are matrices So, if the starting matrix B naught is i then B 1 is product of this right product of this 2 into this plus this. Now, this sort of updating moving from B k to B k plus 1 is called the Davidian Fletcher Powell update or Davidian Fletcher Powell method. So, uh, the, the upper one is called Now, the question is how do you actually solve 
this problem the weighted uh, graph problem or how do you actually solve that problem that is a very very important question and if I really want to solve that kind of problem it is quite difficult and in the sense that it is bit involved and it might be the scope of it might be beyond the scope of this audience which is a mixed one I guess. So, I will look into a much simpler version of this problem which I take from Guler Osman Guler uh, foundations of optimization and with that simple problem I will try to solve that simple problem leaving the difficult job to you of course, but let us look at that simple problem. So, simpler version of problem Q n due to Guler. Now, uh, let us look at this problem. See, we will we'll just look into this problem. So, we will take an x let. So, let. So, we will consider now the problem is on the space S n of symmetric matrices. So, we will minimize a matrix n cross n matrix x using the Frobenius norm. In fact, I will I'll minimize half of the square of that such that x times a is B, where A is an n cross n matrix and B is an n cross n matrix and of course, we do not expect B to be 0, B of course, we will expect B to be non 0 and A to be non 0 too. So, let us just take for the time mean. So, x is my So, this is a structured optimization problem as Guler calls it. So, we will just write it down here as this is a structured optimization problem. In fact, I have a query, query to give you here as a homework can you take this. Can you show that B k plus 1 is positive definite if B k is so. So, take it take, take this as a homework. Now, we are going to look into this problem and try to solve this problem. <coughs> if I write down the I can write down everything in terms of the variables x i j where x where I can choose x the matrix x can be written as So, these x i j can be my variables. So, there are n square variables now and these thing x equal to x transpose this can be set up for for So, I can write the this constraint can be written like this and this constraint this one as, as I have shown you earlier can be written as now. Now, 
Okay. So, how do I construct the Lagrangian of this, so that I can write down the Karushkuntakar conditions. The Lagrangian which is of course, given in terms of x lambda right and delta and this is now given as half summation i j from 1 to n x i j square plus now this x a equal to b can be written as summation x i j a j minus b j. So, you can write this very basic matrix multiplication. So, it is i is equal to 1 to n lambda i p i minus summation x i j a j. Now, if you look at this j, it is j is equal to 1 to n and then you of course, have So, this is your Lagrangian, but this if you really try to take the derivative and all those things, this will become very, very complicated. So, in order to make the solution look simpler to do the solution simply uh, what we do is we uh, actually put in uh, this whole thing in form of a matrix in terms of the matrix x. So, x will now play a role you see the complications that will arise if you are now putting a weighted thing and getting this. Right. Now, let me uh, write down the stuff. So, you know in general if you have a matrix x in the space r n cross n. So, any x is a member of r n cross n it can be represented because if I, I can represent a matrix x if I by using a fake operation. If it is if it is column is first column is a 1 second column is a 2 then I stack up the columns like this and I get this n n n n n times. So, this is an n cross n into 1 vector. So, it is an n square vector and this vector is a member of r n cross n. So, that is why it is always written like this x is in r n cross n. Then the inner product if this is the case then the inner product then the inner product is given as follows the inner product of 2 members of R n cross n is usually given as trace of x transpose y and if x and y belong to S n which space of symmetric matrices space of then x y can also be written as just trace of. Now, what happened is as follows. Now, it is very important how do I express this thing. This part of course, I can write this part is nothing but half x x in, a, in terms of the inner product. So, I am writing every term thing in terms of the matrix. So, now how do I translate this one? This second part is translated as follows 
is written as lambda times b minus x a right and this means lambda b minus lambda times x a now look at this expression lambda times x a So, this inner product, if you look at this inner product, this inner product is nothing but trace of lambda transpose x a. So, okay, what I am trying to mean is as follows. So, what is the trace of lambda transpose x a? Because lambda transpose x a is just a number. So, it is a 1 cross 1 matrix. So, its trace is that number. So, that is the trace of this. So, this can be again written as using the associative law of matrices, the trace of x a lambda transpose. See, this is not a symmetric matrix a lambda transpose. So, this a lambda transpose is not a symmetric matrix. And so, when I write the, so it will be if x into y means, so it means trace of x. So, basically this would become trace of a b is trace of b a. So, here what had happened? they have taken x a lambda transpose, then by associative law it become x a lambda transpose. So, now this is I can write this as trace of right. So, this simply means transpose of the transpose, if I take transpose of the trans, transpose of the transpose. So, basically this actually means a lambda transpose transpose x, which is same as writing as x lambda a transpose. So, here comes the nice equation that I have lambda times x of a is equal to x times lambda of a transpose. So, this is the inner product in R n. And this is the inner product in R n cross n, but there is an interesting relation you see that is the beauty of mathematics, a better one. So, once I know this, then I look into it bit more deeply. It is same as as we have written in the last page trace of x a lambda transpose and this This is a, sorry, just this step. Let me have a look at it. Okay, the same thing which can be a lambda transpose x. So, which can be written as follows. This can be written as taking taking up from here. It can be also written as 
lambda so this is already lambda a transpose transpose so it's all right so this is nothing but x of a lambda transpose so you see there's a lot of links so once you have seen this i can also write lambda x a can be also written as x of a lambda transpose plus lambda a transpose these are matrices by 2. So, this I leave as so this is now a symmetric matrix. So, this is homework this is very simple you have to observe these things that is all half of this plus half of this that is all half of this plus half of this is this. Now, once you do that then I can now write the Lagrangian function L x lambda delta as now what about this part this part is that we are already taking this whole thing to be true because this part now x is equal to x transpose. So, we are now taking only symmetric matrices now my problem is is of this form that I have to only bother about symmetric matrices right. So, x is so I have to now I now what I do is I make not this Lagrangian I, I now just look at this Lagrangian like this. right and I actually now construct this Lagrangian the first part and the second part because now I am just working in S n I will tell you what is the issue. Now, you let me just tell you something what happens here is this you might tell me what about this constant where does it vanish to. So, I can because here what I have done I have already taken x equal to x transpose and I have set up my problem as this my the Goulet's problem is now this. S n is my whole space, S n is a space of all symmetric matrices. Now, then what I am doing is my optimality conditions should tell me something, my optimality conditions or the Karush Kuntakar condition. is to note that basically my my S n is just like your R n the whole thing that is the whole space. So, the normal cone to that whole space is actually 0. So, basically we are now minimizing some inequality constant problem. So, if I am putting whole thing in S n I do not need to bother to put this this thing I know that it is in S n only my problem is in S n. So, I need not bother to put this thing. So, I am looking at the whole thing in from the from the matrix perspective right from the completely from the matrix perspective. So, my S n is my whole space now. So, basically in 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 S n problem is. 
So, in S n I am doing this problem. that is my problem and on this I can now apply the Karush Kuntar condition by taking the gradient of the Lagrangian. So, now what we do is uh, you take the gradient of the Lagrangian and equate it to 0. You see the Lagrangian is now written like this and then, then that would give you x minus a lambda transpose plus lambda a transpose. So, this is 0. So, this simply tells you x must itself be of the form a lambda transpose plus lambda a transpose. So, a is given to you what you have to know is lambda the Lagrange multiplier. So, here you see the importance of the Lagrange multiplier or the Karush Kuntagar multipliers. So, now you might ask me how why are you applying Karush Kuntagar multipliers? How do you know the KKT condition will hold? How do you know that there is a constant qualification which is satisfied? Now, in the setting of S n x a equal to b is a linear inequality and hence there is no requirement of any satisfaction of a constant qualification and kkt there would be a kkt multiplier right we have shown that there would exist a kkt multiplier i hope you remember that we have shown that every frisson point it can be thought as a KKT point because there would exist a KKT multiplier. I can always show that I can directly reach the KKT conditions if I have linear constraints, right. So, if that is the case, then here we have. So, this would be this and this would give me this is the inner product of course. Time. So, this is real number into this vector, this real number into this vector. Now, B transpose A which is B inner product A. can be written like this. I want you to check the calculation that I am doing. Now, so, the last equation from this this one we have lambda transpose a is equal to a transpose b divided by 2 norm a square. So, lambda transpose a can now be put in here. So, if I put this here I can get out lambda. So, then this is a and b put lambda transpose a into put lambda transpose a into the equation a to get so 
you can understand this will become bit complicated when you have that particular structure S k y k you can A is your S k and B is your y k here that is all. So, now putting this into x, so x would be a b transpose plus b a transpose So, this is what is usually called the Broiden, this updating is called the Broiden, Broiden, Fletcher, Goldfarb, Shannon update. We will write it in terms of S k, Y k, etcetera tomorrow. So, we will write this down in terms of, uh, so in terms of the B k 1 plus B k, but there the main no, uh, norm is taken in a very different way. So, here that will give you okay. Okay, just try to the use this technique and just take the Frobenius norm of B no, norm B minus B k and try to see whether you get this formula. So, here you see basically B k minus 1 norm B k that is, that is what you are basically looking at. Here you see the minus 1, the minus 1 is here. So, B k S k is your Y k right that is your norm here plus. So, minus part is here plus part is here. So, x is actually your B minus B k, B k plus 1 minus B k. So, you here it comes your A A transpose, A A transpose. So, this is what is the this is called this is your BFGS update. So, we will write down the BFGS formal algorithm tomorrow and go ahead a bit into our study of the. So, this when B, B k is P d, B k plus 1 is P d. So, we can go ahead into our study of the problem the quasi Newton method. I will take once after I finish the quasi Newton method or then I want to go into the issues of constant programming and I want to talk about penalty function method. I would take a very special lecture in on the KKT conditions for linear programming problem. See it is usually felt and it written in every book that I have seen is that every F j point is a KKT point, but that actually is a misinformation in a sense that what we can show that there would exist a Fritzsohn multiplier give me any local um, global minimum of a linear programming problem there would exist one Fritzsohn multiplier which is normal. You cannot say that every Fritzsohn multiplier associated with a linear programming problem is normal. I think in from my earlier lecture that would not have been clear. So, I would take a complete step by step lecture to study the linear programming problem KKT conditions for linear programming problem or Fritz John conditions for linear programming problem. So, this is that would be a very special lecture and I think that everybody should listen very very carefully that if a constraint qualification fails the mass manga sari and from which constraint qualification fails even if the your problem is linear there would exist an abnormal multiplier this is something which is very important in your understanding of optimization. Okay, so, tomorrow we will continue our journey in on the 
quasi-Newton method.